So we're at the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine. People might know it as the Coroner's Court. And my role here is as a forensic radiologist. So there are about 35, 40,000 deaths per year in Victoria, and we get 7,000 of those. And the 7,000 we get are the ones that have to be reported to the coroner. So they're traumatic deaths, homicide, suicides, motor vehicle accidents, work-related accidents, assaults, etc. And then the biggest group that we see here are sudden unexpected deaths. So people who die suddenly, unexpectedly, and a doctor cannot write a death certificate. Everyone gets a scan, every single person gets a scan, except for those individuals that are too big and won't fit through that hole. The staff here now um, all have had to learn how to become radiographers as well as mortuary technicians. But from time to time we do other things. So for a homicide, for example, we would not open the bag. The bag would just be scanned as is because we want to uh, document the body as it hit our place so that we have a record of what it looked like when it came. So if it's got jewellery or you know, whatever, once the pathologist has looked at the body, has taken that off, we can rescan. This uses radiation, so you can't do this in living persons. In de deceased persons, we don't have to worry about radiation. Just yeah, we can. We can use radiation at high levels so that we can actually get really, really good quality examination. And the other great thing is now because of the computer graphics, we can produce amazing pictures, which I'll show you, and we can use those pictures in court. So this is a routine case where we'd scan the body from head to toe, and we're able to rotate that body around. So we can look for injuries, for example, looking for um, abnormalities of the bone. We want to look at the skull, you could rotate these images. If a, a piece of a body part is found washed up on a beach, for example, we will scan that. So we have a record of absolutely everything that's come into this place that is biological and sometimes not. So sometimes people find things and think, oh my God, this is a, turns out to be a toy or a, or a piece of fish or a whatever that's brought into us because they think they've found a piece of a deceased person. We will scan those as well. So we scan everything that comes through here. So like with a and her foot, their foot would have been scanned? I don't know when Sydney, if it was here, it would definitely have been done. We would have done that. So routine scanning is just, we place the body on the scanner and we scan from head to toe. But there are procedures that we can do um, to enhance the organs in the body. Instead of using embalming fluid, we use a dye, a contrast agent, and we basically fill every artery and vein in the body with this dye. So when we do this angiogram, we can see that there's a hole in a vein here that's leaking dye into the, into the abdominal cavity. So this is of great benefit to the pathologist because for them to try and find that would be extremely difficult. I was at a Christmas party and I was talking to a colleague and his wife was a forensic pathologist and she said they needed someone down at the coroner's court. So I just volunteered and I turned up here in 2002 and 20 something years later, I'm still here. In 2005, there are very few institutes in the world that had such a thing. I was angling to try and get a scanner here, but of course money was the problem. But the Bali bombing amazingly changed everything. The first blast was in Paddy's Bar. Then a second, much larger explosion went off outside the Sari Club. One of the issues in the Bali bombing was the bodies were just left out, decomposing. It was a very um, unfortunate situation. There was a lot of delay. Families were very upset. And so we put in a submission to say that this scanner potentially could be used uh, in a mass disaster to speed up identification. And amazingly, um, we had Black Saturday in Victoria. At Narry Warren, an inferno tore through in a matter of minutes. In one street, five houses were lost. Our plan, which we didn't know whether it would work, did work amazingly well, so we were able to identify 174 persons who died in Black Saturday, and the CT scanner was a big part of that. So in Australia, we started here, and now every state in Australia now has scanners. Australia New Zealand probably leading the world, I'd say. It's, it's fantastic because there are, I mean, religious reasons or ethical reasons or whatever reasons, they don't like the idea of an autopsy. 
To be able to be able to do this and for then the coroner to say autopsy is not necessary, families really appreciate that. I'll tell you a story. We had a service contract, so if it broke down between nine to five, Monday to Friday, they'd come and fix it. If it broke down on the weekend or after hours, we'd wait till the next day. We now have a 24 seven service contract, including Christmas day. If this machine goes down for a, a day, the pathologists are screaming, everyone's screaming, we need it, we need it, we need it, because it's so intrinsic to the way we do business here that we cannot allow this to be down. The most exciting thing is another big area of medical imaging is MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. So there are only very few institutes in the world that have both CT and MRI uh, available in the mortuary. CT is really good at some things, but there are some areas that it's not particularly good at. It's not very good at little babies, whereas MRI is amazingly good in children and babies. It's not so good for looking um, at the brain, and it's not so good at looking at the heart. So the concept that we've come up with that the government has supported is the concept of one room, two doors. So we'll have a clinic on one side for living persons, completely separate from the mortuary side, which is the second door, which will be deceased persons. <laughs> I'd like it to increase. I'm getting towards the end of my medical career. This is the area that really stimulates me uh, intellectually. I, I saw one, a case today and I was talking with our colleagues and I think I've probably seen something that no one else has ever seen. And it's just a fantastically stimulating uh, experience to be able to do that and stuff.